The most important thing to learn is how to value a business. It's also the toughest to explain. Uh, you know, I look for certain, you, you look for certain things that allows you to narrow it down, like I was saying about, you know, the Spassky-Fisher situation. So if I'm a basketball coach, you know, and I see a guy, and I'm walking down the, around the campus here, and I see somebody seven feet tall, I'm interested. You know. Now, he may not be coordinated. He may not be, we may not be able to keep him in school. You know, he may be robbing, you know, stores at night or something but he's still the right guy to be looking at. You know? I mean, we can work with this guy. <laughs> so I am interested in seven footers, maybe 6'10". And if I see some guy that's 5'3", and he comes up to me, and he's dribbling away, and he's telling me, you know, doing fancy moves, and he says, Coach, you know, I said, I'm your guy. I say, yeah, <laughs> but you know, if you get in there against these seven footers, I'm not sure he'll be dribbling exactly the same way. I, I just, I'm going to skip him. You know, he may be a wonderful prospect and all that, but I'm not interested in that. So I am looking for things, signals, that tell me in investments what height and a few things might tell me if I was a basketball coach. In the end, what I'm going to buy is the business where I feel extremely certain about the competitive advantage, extremely certain about the integrity and ability of the management, and where I think the discounted flow of the cash that business will produce over time makes sense in relation to its current price. Uh, you really are looking for a business where you see the future. And that's why we, you know, we don't get in tech. It isn't that I don't love the computer and think it's doing all kinds of things for society. I just don't know what it's gonna look like in terms of who's gonna be selling what to whom and at what prices and against whom and all of that sort of thing 10 years from now, whereas I know that people are going to be chewing Wrigley's chewing gum in 10 years. I mean, people sitting in front of a computer chewing gum will not behave way differently than people chewing gum, you know, in this audience as we talk. I mean, it's, it, there are certain things that won't be affected. Uh, Gillette razor blades. I mean, you know, that 70% uh, of the value worldwide of razors and blades is Gillette. That's after almost 100 years of shaving, and everybody knows what a razor blade does. They all know how to buy the steel. They all know how to sell it through Walmart or whomever. But 70% of the world. Now, part of that's because men don't like to change as much. I mean, men gets happy with something. He doesn't fool around with it a lot. Women are a little more inclined to experiment. But, uh, but uh, you know, for $25 a year, something you do every day, you get a wonderful experience with Gillette. You know, what better is the world going to offer you? you know, you're getting a claim currently about some four blade razor, but don't worry about that one. The 70%, uh, <laughs> just think of that. You know, Coca-Cola, 19 billion cases of, of Coke. I mean, uh, 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 not Coke, but Coke products sold a year. But, uh, you know, everybody in the world drinking it. You think, will that change dramatically in the next 10 years? You know, I bet my life against that. But, uh, we, sell, we sell C's candy in California. Uh, There's 35 million people in California. Uh, they did the right thing last Tuesday, incidentally. The, uh, <laughs> uh, people ask how I got involved in the Schwarzenegger campaign. And I, I won a look-alike contest. I mean, the, <laughs> the, the, uh, but here they are, 35 million people. Everybody in California has something in their mind about C's candy. You know, what candies are in your mind? You know, number one, candy bars, Snickers. Number one candy bar 10 years ago was Snickers. Number one candy bar 20 years ago was Snickers. People don't fool around with candy bars. I mean, you cannot come out with lots of new bars and intrigue people. It's not like, you know, perfume or other things maybe that where people experiment. If you go into the drugstore and you say, I want a Snickers bar and it's 60 cents and the druggist says, I've got something just as good for 55 cents called Joe Schmo's, you know, caramel and nut bar. You're going to walk across the street. Now, when you walk across the street for a product, then you got a business. I mean, that is the test. And where a nickel doesn't make a difference. And so it's, you know, there is no good way to compete with Snickers. You want something where price competition is not solely going to be the determining factor. And that's true of razor blades. It's true of Snickers. It's true of C's candy. It's true of Coca-Cola. And there's a lot of things of which it isn't true. That mode is what is differentiation of product. Differentiation of service, differentiation of location, whatever it may be, and, 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 and that's, that's essential.